Hello and welcome to the Greek Eculus on a Monk. And today, guys, we are in Crusader Kings 3. And this is the very last episode slash video um, of our God Let's Play series. So for anyone that didn't watch and that hasn't followed this playthrough, we created a living god yes that's right guys we went into character selection chose all the best traits and decided to be a living god having a lot of traits and a lot of points as well do you know what we've had an absolute blast and i know this is going to be the last episode the last video because we've actually gone ahead and got the death omen so we know we're gonna die i'm not gonna make it to 115 so this is where we're at 114 years old 27 children 27 children which is an absolute beast of a number glad to see that and you know what we have conquered a lot we have the whole i say the whole of the uk and a reason i say the whole of the uk i'll explain in a minute we have the entirety of the uk we managed to conquer Brittany as well we've gone up into scandinavia and conquered a decent chunk i would say i would say that's a decent chunk it's something that i would like to continue doing and continue to eating up However, if you followed the playthrough, I did mention I didn't want to accidentally create two empires or have enough so I'd have two empires, um, which is why we kind of stopped attacking up here and taking more land. But we did do a trade off and decide to come down here into what's this Germany? Yeah, I think that's kind of Germany area. And we started eating up a little bit of this as well, as well as taking Greenland as well and of course we do have the whole of ireland so do you know what i think in the one life the one go that we have played we've done really well we've collected a ton of land absolute ton of land managed to have a huge amount of children and do you know what we've got a pretty decent dynasty as well because if we go over to a dynasty a bush and if we go over to the family tree, we have 190 living relatives, which is ridiculous. Our, you know, we are level of splendor. We are well known. So considering we've only had one life, we've played through, what, 100 years, a little bit less than 100 years. Um, we've been able to do an awful lot and our name is everywhere now, which is, I think, pretty cool. In fact, we can even have another legacy. And that's on top of already having four legacies open. Uh, what should we have? I think we're going to have... We're going to strengthen our bloodline. I think that would be a really good. So there we go. We've strengthened our bloodline even more. And all of this has been happening within one playthrough. Now, we did have a little bit of a mishap, and that's with our culture. We haven't been head of culture. Not really sure um, how we've managed to not be head of culture, but we kind of messed up there. So we haven't been head of culture. We wasn't, haven't been able to... Um, decide which technologies unlocked when they did which was a bit of a downfall i also really wanted to create my own religion again that was something i never managed to do because i never owned two religious areas that belonged to the religion that i was because i am norse so that's what we were playing with we did also manage to have a lot of witches within the family which again i think is quite cool i'm glad that we went down that route actually made a witch coven um, so yeah so we've had a lot of fun i think i think what helps the most was the amount of domains we were able to have having being able to have 27 domains was huge absolute huge paid out massively um the sheer amount of levies that we're able to have like the army size that we're able to have basically meant that we could walk up and take absolutely 
anything we wanted to. I don't think there's a nation in here right now that we couldn't stand up against if we didn't want to. Um, yes, we have alliances, but we haven't actually had to use them once in the playthrough. There was one time when we had an uprising and I didn't pay attention to my factions. I needed my um, allies then, but apart from that, didn't need any allies throughout the entire game, which I think is pretty cool considering. Um, let's have a little look. What was I going to look at? These are probably the biggest name on the map as of right now. And if we was to go and have war with them, again, we can just straight conquer them. There's nothing stopping us. No one in the world can stop us right now um, with their solo army or with their alliances. The Byzantium Empire, absolute powerhouse. Again, we just currently dwarf them. So having those levies have really helped i think when we die it's gonna change the game quite significantly um and i feel like when we die that's when this game could really get interesting because despite us being a god you know our player air isn't who we wanted it to be our player air actually um was this guy he died had a son and now my grandson is actually the king of Hungary, which is rather interesting. So Hungary currently isn't part of my empire. When I die, Hungary will be part of my empire, which is why I've said we've conquered all of the UK. Because, hey, King Monk of Hungary is my player heir. He is 63, so he's not going to live for very long. However, he does actually have a son already ready which is kind of good because he's only 26 so i think that we've got a good thing set up here and if we have a little look see our king the player air that we're gonna have he does actually have some pretty decent stats he is intelligent which is great he is robust again which is great so when it comes to those congenital traits we did actually manage to get a couple i wonder if his heir actually managed to get any of those as well it looks like he did it looks like he got robust which is brilliant for that medium health boost and the extra prowess i like that so our congenital traits are starting to work for us already you know three generations in um, and the, the congenital traits are running for us so we are going to unpause the game, see what happens when we die, see what happens eventually when we do die, and if our kingdom, our empire stays intact. I think it will do, but we're going to see exactly what happens. Let's just fast forward it. I'm not actually going to do anything. I'm just going to kind of let things happen. Looks like my lover died. That's a shame for her. Let's just see what happens as we fast forward through. I don't think there's any danger of us um, having any more kids, unfortunately. All the way through this campaign, we constantly try to make sure that we could have more kids, more kids, more kids. 27 kids is the most I've ever had um, in one playthrough. Let me know if you've had more children than me. I think it's kind of cool that my daughter-in-law just had a kid let's just pause it really quickly i think it's kind of cool that where we are within the game um we actually have four generations so as you can see my son's son has had a son so we're four generations into the playthrough even though we are still on our first life really like that i think that's kind of cool don't often see a game play out so well. But if you've ever seen my playthroughs before, you'll know that there's no saves coming or anything like that. We do just play straight out, um, which is kind of cool. Oh, what has happened? This isn't good. King Monk, the, the future of Britannia has changed in its course as we know it now oh the king has died that's not cool a blessing or a curse what exactly just happened there guys 
Hungary, we're going to have to. This has not gone out the way I thought it would. Grand Torta has had a son, which is cool. Now, we had a strange omen. Uh, I thought that meant my death, but oosh, is, have I not died? He's now my player heir. He's 27. I would quite like that, you know, that takeover. Are we actually able to carry on living? Should I be playing, taking over more land? I feel like it's possible, guys. I feel like it's very possible. Oh, for West Francia? Have a lot of uh, allies then. An awful lot. What about Italy? It's just not going the way I thought it would. I thought this episode was all done and dusted. I thought this playthrough was all done and dusted. But now seeing my son died instead of me. I feel like we've got a chance. Objectives. Let's go. Let's do that instead. If we're going to go, we're going to have to go. I think we have a truce on him right now. I'm going to try and get some land that is actually connected to where we're looking at. Greater Poland. Um, that will do. That will do. Let's see how this actually works. Wait, those wars didn't get declared. Let's do that again. There we go. And this one right here too. Okay. Well, like I said, I'm very surprised that we lasted. There was an omen. I thought it meant my death. If it wasn't my death and it was my son's death, how long can we keep going? I don't know, but we're about to find out. Let's just move my troops on down. Make sure that we actually take the right place. Now, it looks like they brought in some allies and they've got quite a few um, capitals for us to target. Considering we're only at war with, I think, two. It says three. But I thought we asked to go to war with two. Let's take this guy as well. Gonna take an extra castle and let's grab him as well and take an extra castle. Where's the castle? Yeah, we can take that castle. And now we've got 20,000 troops to move. Let's grab these guys. There we go. Let's see how this flies. Like I said, guys, I'm extremely surprised that we are still alive. Um, but hey, this all good. When we do eventually die, our heir will inherit. Now our heir is actually only 20, what, 27, so maybe 30 when we take over. 
I think that's kind of cool. Um, taking over with a character that young is very good. What you don't want is you to die, your son to die, and you know, and in that order, and it's constantly that change of hands on your empire. That's when your empire becomes very, very weak, and things don't go your way very, very quickly. But hey, we can't have much long left in our life, that's for damn sure. Um, not when you consider everything that has gone on and the age that we are. We can't live forever after all. We have taken this. Again, no perfect example of how... Our armies are able to take on almost anybody as we are taking on three countries at once. Oh, wait a minute. He is in Britain. Let's get him to take over that. We'll get him to take over that. Him to take over there. This one's been done, so we'll take over this. I think we're doing okay. We don't care about all of this, you get. Fine, I must decline because this is far too much, dude. There was a lot of troops moving around there and I kind of thought that one of my armies would be taken. Doesn't look like that's happened just yet. I'm going to pause it real quick. Pop down here. Make sure we're taking over another piece of land. That's almost... We've lost a lot of troops there. They're hungry, uh, unfortunately. Taking over this, let's pop him down there. There we go. There we go, it has finally happened. Now it took a little bit longer than I thought it would. Um, absolutely. We actually died at 117. We reigned for 98 years, which is pretty cool. And of course, we do get to carry on. It's not my son. It is um, actually it's not my son. It's not my grandson. It is my great grandson that I am passing the throne onto, which personally I think is pretty cool. Um, Titles inherited, so I have inherited quite a few by the looks of it. Um, a lot of these are going to be broken up into everyone else that should have some bits. Um, so yeah, let's see how this actually goes. We're going to absolutely um, want to pause the game and just see what's happened. Where is it going? And as you can see, Hungary has now been um, popped. I think this was Hungary. So it's now been popped into our empire. And again, what was hungry over here in Britannia, that's now under us as well. It looks like we have lost a little bit of land, possibly. Um, no, he is my vassal, King Michael Odinson of Norway. Um, who was his parents? It was... Oh, okay, so he is my grandchild. He is part of the family. Very cool. So, yeah, so it looks like we... Oh, okay, who owns this again? A vassal in your realm. Okay. So the kingdom did actually manage to stay together, which is pretty cool. I say kingdom, but the emperor, empire, managed to stay together. And we do, of course, 
have a brand new heir. And he's already set up with his own kid as well. Well, there you go, guys. That is what Britannia and my empire looks like after just one life. Looks like the god characters are for the win. Um, we no longer have all of those um, troops that we're able to get anymore because we don't have all of that domain, unfortunately, which is a real shame. I really enjoyed that. That was a ridiculously good domain. And our levies have reduced quite a bit. So being able to keep this empire together is going to probably solely only going to happen if we're able to get a few decent um, alliances together, which I think we can, to be fair. But thank you for joining me, guys. If you have been keeping up with this playthrough, if you've enjoyed it, let me know down in the comments if you want to see a different playthrough run. Again, let me down and let me know down in the comments. We're very happy to see what you guys think and how your playthrough is going. And if you have a build or we want to talk about build guides for the created characters in Crusader Kings 3, let me know. Let me know your favorite build when it comes to being able to grab achievements. And of course, if you turn those achievements off and go way over, what's your favorite go to there? But until next time, I've been a monk, we've been pretty Kudos, and I'll see you in the next video real soon. Until then, take it easy and happy gaming.